The next problem is the nature of faith. Atheists have no faith, wrote Richard Dawkins, and then wrote a book on what he believes. <laughs> Hitchens, our beliefs are not a belief, our faith is not a faith. What? But where does it come from? It comes from a subtle redefinition of the concept of faith that many people have bought into. Webster's Dictionary, new entry. Faith, noun, believing where there's no evidence. That isn't faith, ladies and gentlemen, that's blind faith. Ordinary faith, fides, Latin, loyalty, trust, is the kind of thing that we all know about in our life. You know why you trust your friends. Your bank manager will want to know why he can trust you to give you a loan or a mortgage. Everybody in the Western world knows what evidence-based faith means. And you're a fool to believe something without any evidence. If I say, I believe that or I trust that, the next logical question is, why? On what basis? Now, you see what's happened very subtly, led by Dawkins and others, is to redefine faith as a purely religious word, which it isn't, it's an ordinary word, meaning believing where there's no evidence. That is desperately wrong and dangerous. Now, I must speak as a Christian. Other religious traditions must rightly speak for themselves, but Christianity is an evidence-based faith. I can demonstrate that just in a moment. Because one of the central claims of, say, the Gospel of John is many other signs Jesus did that are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. In other words, here are the signs, the semion, from which we get semiotics, the indicators on which faith is based. I wouldn't sit here for a microsecond if I didn't believe that my Christian faith is based on evidence. That's one side of the story. But now we come to the other side. What this is confusion has caused is people overlook totally the fact that faith is essential to science. Absolutely essential. Einstein once said, I cannot imagine a real scientist without that faith. Now, he didn't mean faith in God. He meant faith in the rational intelligibility of the universe. He meant that conviction that drove Galileo, Kepler, Newton, Clark Maxwell, and so on. They believed that the universe was intelligible because they believed in God. But leave God out of it. You cannot do science. You can't even start to do science without believing it can be done. That is your belief. Now, you give evidence for it, of course. But I was taught quantum physics by Professor Sir John Polkinghorne, and he reminds us in his books that physics is powerless to explain its faith in the rational intelligibility of the universe for the simple reason that you have to believe that before you start. So here's the fascinating thing. People write me off, at least Dawkins does. I'm a man of faith, which means I believe that there's no evidence, but he's a man of faith. And this is illustrated brilliantly in my debate with Peter Singer, who's the world's most famous bioethicist from Princeton. I debated him in Australia. And I usually tell audiences that I have a worldview. My parents were Christians, so were my grandparents. And of course, I get written off because then my Christianity is Irish genetics, full stop. Well, OK, I was honest about that and can discuss that if you want to question it. And Peter Singer stood up and he said, well, there goes my biggest objection to all religion. People just stay in the faith in which they were brought up, you see. So I thought this is going to be very interesting. So when I had a chance to speak, I said, Peter, I told them about my background, that I first met my worldview from my parents who lived it, and then I tested it in all kinds of other ways later. But what about you? Were your parents atheists? He said, yes, they were. Oh, I said, that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> you, you have stayed in the faith in which you were brought up. Oh, but he said, it isn't a faith. Oh, I said, Peter, I'm desperately sorry. I was under the impression you believed it. <laughs> now, cyberspace went wild because he was one of the world's leading philosophers that doesn't recognize his atheism as a belief system. Ladies and gentlemen, that's serious. 
And it's come about by this redefinition of faith. Real faith is not blind faith. It's a commitment either to facts or people or all kinds of other things based on evidence. And it's only as strong and viable as the evidence that stands behind it. But it's absolutely essential to science.